The all new 2024 Ford Ranger is finally here. Of course, it's been overseas for basically a year now, but it's finally making it to the US and Canadian, the North American market, and it is looking very nice. We're gonna be talking about price, equipment, trims. We're really gonna be covering it all. And we're gonna be covering the huge news that this is gonna have a six cylinder twin turbo engine optional without having having to go to the Raptor. So of course the Raptor has the three liter twin turbo V6, fantastic engine already exists in the Explorer ST and the Aviator. It's proven itself, it can, it can really haul and tow, it can do it all on heavy vehicles. So it's gonna be amazing in the Ranger Raptor, obviously. And in the Ranger Raptor, uh, of course, let's talk a little bit about power. So, and that's not the biggest news here, but the Ranger, so hold on, but the Ranger Raptor is coming down with 405 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque. So that is your, your truck to, to go off-roading, take the jumps with, and it's looking amazing. This new Raptor, as you can see, is a good mix between the current F-150 and the Ford Maverick. So this is the new design, the family design behind Ford trucks. I'm sure when the 2024 Ford F-150 comes out, it's gonna have a bit more of this design to it. So it came out first with the Maverick, and you can really see on the, on the Raptor here, you've got incredible sculpted hood, you got the line coming down, popping out for the fenders, and yet again to encompass, to hold back those huge off-road wheels. So we've got a gorgeous vehicle here, 405 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque. That is a lot. That's actually best-in-class power. And with Ford's intelligent four-wheel drive system, you've got a great vehicle that's gonna be amazing in the mud, in the snow, torrential rains, it's going to tackle it all. You also have an electronically controlled on-demand two-speed transfer case with front and rear locking differentials for, of course, improved off-road traction. Whether you're on the farm or whether you're on the trails, you are going to love that Raptor. Now, here th here's the big news. You don't have to get a Raptor to love your new Ranger. So the new Ranger, you can actually order it up May 26th, 2023, so real soon, folks. So May 26th, 2023, you can go into a dealer and order. Do consider trying to pre-order one because these are going to sell like hotcakes. And part of that is the price, and another part of that is the available six-cylinder 2.7-liter engine. That's right, folks, the engine from the Ford Bronco is now available, as I predicted, available on the Ranger. And the reason for that is this new Ranger uses the exact same frame, fully boxed in frame, as the Ford Bronco. So when using the fully boxed in frame, you get a very strong, rigid frame that can take a lot of weight. Remember the 23 Ranger currently was the champion for payload in its class, best payload, best towing, best torque, of the gasoline powered engines and it's going to be looking good but it's getting that 2.7 liter so this is more than just about looking good this is going to have incredible performance we'll get to the power of that 2.7 liter v6 twin turbo but remember that six cylinder twin turbo engine is available in f-150 and people who actually give it a chance and try it out have very positive uh, reviews and very positive opinions of that 2.7 liter V6. In the F-150, you can tow like 10,000 pounds. The thing now, it's gone up over the years. So the thing is a powerhouse. It also accelerates really well. I had it in my Bronco and I absolutely loved that two point, I love the 2.7 liter six cylinder twin turbo from Ford. So with the new Ranger, we're getting a whole lot of much needed tech we're getting upgrades it's coming into the modern world of course the previous ranger uh, basically goes back to 2015 in europe but you've got this awesome behind screen for the behind steering wheel screen you've got of course if you do go up to the raptor you're gonna get you know skid plates you're gonna get fox 
shock absorbers. So incredible, incredible shock absorbers. I've owned an F-150 Raptor and I can say the Fox shocks on that really do an amazing job. I'm waiting on a Bronco. I took wild track because I wanted the Fox system. Fox shocks really get the job done. Now let's talk about pricing. The starting price of this machine obviously not the raptor is going to be thirty four thousand one hundred and sixty dollars and yes that is up three thousand dollars from the current ranger just like i've predicted for the new tacoma that we'll find out at the end of the month what the new pricing for the new toyota tacoma is i expect the the, the tacoma to go up by about three or four two to four thousand dollars well the ranger has gone up by three thousand dollars falling in with my prediction very happy that my prediction that we would get and also a bit of rumors that we'd have an optional v6 well the rumors that I've been talking about for almost six months saying well there's actually there's some rumors we're gonna get an optional v6 will it just be the option is to take a Raptor because we've known about the Raptor now for quite some time but I said I don't think so and I was right we're getting that 2.7 liter v6 now if you do go with a new Colorado so let's just talk pricing versus the market the new Colorado starts at thirty thousand six hundred and ninety five dollars and the old Tacoma model starts at 28,250 is how they advertise it. But really, in reality, once you click around on the website, you'll end up when you get the total finding out that that's without destination. So that's a little annoying, but it's 30,114. The Nissan Frontier with transportation, the going out the door, baseline standard starting price is 30,025. The Honda Ridgeline starts at 38,800. The Gladiator, the Jeep Gladiator starts at 38,775. So it is the most expensive midsize truck you can get, but it's a convertible. So the top comes off, but that's a lot of money, folks. And uh, the Honda Ridgeline actually is a good amount of money as well, because it's just slightly a few hundred dollars less than that the price of the Jeep. So it's also the Jeep uh, Gladiator. So it's also playing in the $38,000 range. So quite a bit more, but they're actually selling quite a few more because not everyone's getting their Maverick in the timeline that they'd like. And I think that's drawing in a lot of sales to the Ridgeline because the Maverick's drawing in a lot of people who've never owned a truck before. Then they wait for their Maverick and I truly, we own one. It is truly worth the wait. Uh, definitely worth the wait for the Ford Maverick for your order because of the price, the fuel economy, but some people get tired and they decide they're just gonna spend a whole lot more on a Honda Ridgeline and that's fine. It's fun to have choices. Choices equal help us feel a little more free to actually have choices. We're not, you know, this isn't communist Russia. We're not just getting one vehicle, maybe one choice of vehicle and, you know, almost no one gets it. So it is nice to have choice. Now, don't be fooled though, because uh, the, <laughs> here's an important thing. If you're thinking and looking at these pictures and you're saying that's the model I want, well, do keep in mind that the Ranger Raptor starts at 56,960. Yes, so Ranger Raptor starts at 56,960. So that's a good m amount of money. Good amount of money, folks. So be careful on the websites all across all the brands. Don't be fooled here. You can often add on destination uh, and transportation to the final price. A lot of websites are from the various manufacturers are showing a price before that added on roughly $2,000. And actually the Gladiator, I need to double check and you can double check if this actually interests you, but I think the Gladiator actually is 40,570 once you add transport and destination. But I'll just have to take a second look. This video actually, we'll talk about that more in the live. This video is all about the new Ranger. And we've got some things Things that we definitely need to still cover on this because the new Ranger you don't have to get a, a Raptor at 56,960 because the XLT looks great and it's very capable so here's your XLT and it's starting at the XLT where you can get that 2.7 liter V6 twin turbo. Otherwise, the standard engine is continuing to be the 2.3 liter force inline four cylinder turbo, which has been a fantastic engine. It's been very, very reliable and it's actually been powerful because it's been the leader up until recently. It was the leader in torque for the segment, had the most towing of the segment for gasoline powered engines. And of course, I've already said it, but had the highest payload so there's your proof right there 
2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 engine available on XLT and Lariat. So I think that's gonna be the real sweet spot. For me personally, it'd be a Lariat 2.7 liter. And that's gonna have 315 horsepower, mind you, as soon as, well, as soon as there's a tune available for it. It's available for the, the Bronco. So you'll be, you'll be able to tune that up to more power if you want, uh, probably add up to 60, 30 horsepower and 60 pound feet of torque just by adding a Ford Performance tuner to it. And the torque, here's the truly impressive thing. I'll zoom in right there so you see it right on the screen. 400 pound feet of torque, folks. That's a ton of torque. That's more than most people will ever need. And the 10 speed select shift automatic transmission. I've been dealing with it with so many models. It's on my, it was on my F-150 Raptor. It's on my Mustang, 2022 Mustang GT. I've had this transmission over the years and I can say the current edition of the 10 speed is fantastically smooth. You know, I had someone just comment the other day who had a 2017 F-150 who said, yeah, the transmission was, it was, it was, it was okay. It was good. But they're saying that their 2022 truck, they absolutely love it. And they've put on about uh, 20,000 miles now. And they've been saying that throughout their entire experience, it's been unbelievably smooth. Same thing for my 2019 Ford F-150 Raptor, very smooth. And if ever you have an old, one of these 10 speed transmissions, it, you know, edition one, <laughs> you, and it does have a bit of um, gear selecting problems, Ford will reprogram that for you uh, if there's a problem present. So Ford does not ignore problems. And that's what I like Ford last year did have the most recalls, but they're taking care of their product and they're making sure that customers are happy. So they focus in and fix the areas of complaints even when something isn't broken, when it can just be improved upon. And that's an example of the edition one, the early edition, the first edition of the 10 speed transmission. So I'm very confident that I can say that, you know, 2.7 liters been around now since 2015, the 10 speed has been around since uh, roughly 2015. You're getting a package that is going to be reliable and that all the bugs have been worked out. Same thing if you go with the 2.3 liter, and if you're thinking, what about that Raptor 3 liter V6 twin turbo engine? You know, am I gonna, is this all new? No, it's not all new. It's been present on both the Explorer and the Lincoln Aviator. And all of these have the 10 speed transmission, same as what's found on the F-150, the Super Duty, as well as the Mustang. They come in various sizes, but it's the same design, folks. You're getting a great, great transmission right there. Now, the new Ranger, it is coming with a whole lot of technology. So finally, you can have it with the brake controller from the factory. So a lot of people are gonna be very happy with that. You can have 360 degree camera. And what that means is, well, when you're backing up, right on your screen here, you can see all around the trunk truck. In front of the truck, behind the truck, on the sides of the truck, you get a bird's eye view of what's going on with the truck there. So people are gonna love that because nobody likes to ding up their truck. Now, another great piece of technology coming to the new Ranger is the 400 watts of in-bed power. Folks, that's fantastic. You can be out on the trails, out in the woods, and you can actually run some electronic equipment and that is gonna be very useful. Of course, bed lighting, so nothing new there to Ford trucks. And here's something new. Now we knew we were gonna get this because it's out in the European market, Australian market, and I've been saying, you know, if it's out in Australia, we're gonna be getting essentially almost the same truck. What's gonna change are the powertrains. I've said it for months now that we're very, very likely, based on some rumors, going to have an optional V6, but I didn't know if that just meant optioning to the Raptor or if it actually meant, I said I felt strongly, optional V6 usually means that it'll be not just one exclusive model, but that it'd be available across multiple models. So you've got that on the XLT and Lariat. So fantastic news there. The new touchscreen really brings the interior of this truck to the modern world. It actually puts it, you know, it feels more 2025 or 2030, the interior of this truck. You've got the huge uh, screen like you have on the F-150 Lightning. The behind steering wheel screen also looks great. You've got wireless charging. We've got, you know, a very usable, usable bed, 
potential to have the 400 watt electric power from your bed. You've got an electric window, which is rather quite nice, available on XLT. That's nice, the Maverick on the XLT. It's a manual sliding window. Now here, the back window, you see it right there. That is an electric window and it's actually well hidden and stylish. And of course, we'll always have the that, you know, Ford Pass, connect your Ford Pass when you get this vehicle because they'll send over the air updates. You can lock your doors and start your vehicle from a distance. So that is your new Ranger. Now colors, folks, let's check out these colors back here. You've got, of course, Cactus Gray looking pretty good, but a lot better in person. I never liked it on the Bronco uh, on the internet, but then when I had it as my own personal vehicle in person, I saw it in person. I said, wow, Cactus Gray looks amazing. So let's now check this out in carbonized gray. So quite a popular color, very, very easy to maintain. You're not, you know, when you wash this, it's not gonna show the little scratches. So little spider web scr scratches in the clear coat. You've got azure gray. Now in person, azure gray is mine blowingly good looking. I do prefer it over area 51, but I do already really like area 51, but this color is fantastic. And actually Dave and Kelly over at All Terrain Nation, they did a video at the Ranger Ready Base Camp and they had this on a Raptor and it looked looks amazing. So right here, you've got your iconic silver white if you're into that now i'm happy with my f-150 white low maintenance truck in regards to you know scratches showing so i'm not having to worry about when i'm going to have to put a, a compound on this or continuously waxing it now a little more maintenance but a whole lot of flash you've got red right here so they're calling that hot pepper red you can see this at ford dealers right now on other models uh the maverick we actually have one in person on our demo maverick that's used so that people can test the vehicle before ordering the vehicle because we know there's a long wait and i think that's how good dealers really should go out of their way to keep models you can try out before having to order and wait. We're not talking about a four week wait here on the Maverick. So in person, this is an incredible color and I was actually almost stuck. <laughs> Very tempted to get my Bronco in this color. Now, black, nothing to say there. You can go to any Ford dealership and they'll have tons of F-150s in that color sitting around. And of course, we've got our Velocity Blue. We had this on one of our Broncos, so Marie's Bronco, mine was the Cactus Gray, Lord Greyjoy, and here we've got the Velocity Blue. We had it on our Bronco, absolutely love it. We miss this color. So this is just a solid, solid color. If you're into blues, you're not going to be disappointed with that color right there. So those are all your colors for the new Ranger, and guess what? Where's the Cyber Orange or Code Orange? So the no yellow or no, you know, Code orange is that really orange pop color that I would have loved to have seen, but it's not gonna be available this year. Maybe we'll see it next year as a color coming up. But I think if anyone orders this vehicle, they're not gonna be disappointed. Uh, the 2.3 liter does the job. It's, it's actually pretty powerful in the Ranger. I've been very happy with it over the years, surprisingly happy with it. Remember, it is the a motor offered in the Mustang. It was the motor for the Focus RS, and the Ranger isn't that heavy. It's about 4,400 pounds, so the 2.3 liter does a great job in there. It really hauls some tail, and uh, you're not gonna be disappointed with it, but you're gonna be blown away if you get the optional 2.7 liter. Now, building price isn't up yet, so we'll have a video covering exactly how much that 2.7 liter engine costs, but in the Bronco, the motor almost costs nothing for all that extra power. Of course, you can always add a programmer to the 2.3 liter. Uh, the programmer on the 2.3 liter really kicks up the power tremendously. Ford performance part right there. But I think if I were to get a Ranger, I would get the XLT 2.7 liter or maybe because I like to have those seats that don't get stained. Maybe I would actually go with the Lariat. So I'd be in between uh, a well-loaded XLT Sport with 2.7 liter engine or the Lariat. So let's find out when the build and price is up. If we're gonna have, if it's just sticking to XL, XL, XLT, Lariat and Raptor, or will they throw in a wild track in there like they have over for the Aussies, mind you. I'm not gonna complain if we don't because, well, with this vehicle, we're getting a whole lot more power in our Raptor compared to theirs. 
Let's do remember that, you know, with the Ranger, these are very capable off-road machines. They've got that off-road cruise control available on them and you also have all the terrain selectors so you select your terrain and the vehicle adapts all its electronic parameters for traction and and more to the terrain that you are on so this is a pretty exciting vehicle look forward to sharing more on it so please do like and subscribe hit the bell notification to make sure you don't miss out and you know, subscribing is free and does help feed and dress those poodles. Thank you very much everyone for sticking to the end of the show. If you made it this far, just comment finisher and we'll see you on our Monday Night Lives. Take care everyone, have a great week and I wish you all more cars and more power.